Hi there folks, my name is Dan Bell, I am with Intergent and today I'm gonna to walk you through creating a major milestone report. And uh, here's, here's the version that I created, you can see it on the screen today. Of course you can use whatever colors you want. And these are the colors that I chose. Uh, we'll, we'll play around with it just a little bit when we get through creating this report. It uses Excel, it's gonna use Power Pivot. And uh, it, it's fairly easy to create. I'm gonna take you through the steps. Probably be a little bit quick for a training video. It's not really meant to be a training video, uh, but since it is a video, you'll be able to stop, start, rewind as much as you please to be able to learn how to create this report yourself. Uh, what it is is a, a major milestone report to communicate to your executives, stakeholders, other individuals, you know, exactly how we are tracking on major milestones in your organization on specific projects. You can see the projects here on the left. Milestones, major milestones are on the top going off to the right. You can see charter approved, schedule completed, design completed, bill completed, so on and so forth. And basically what that is, is that is a, a task level field with a lookup table and these values are actually in the lookup table. And then you just basically select the values at the appropriate milestones within your project. And it uses the uh, task finished variance to determine the level of the variance. And then we use a uh, conditional formatting to display a certain color that uh, highlights you know, visually how we happen to be tracking on those milestones. So let's go. I'm going to uh, launch Excel. Here, I'll start a blank worksheet. And then what I'm gonna do is harvest my PWA URL. If you've created these reports before, you're similar to this. Harvest everything through the PWA slash. Yours, you know, you might be a little bit different than PWA, but suffice to say, just harvest through the PWA, go to data, connections, oh, excuse me, not connections, we're going to, um, from other data sources, from OData feed, paste that in there, underscore API slash project data, and then slash tasks. The only part of this that's case sensitive is the tasks because tasks is the actual name of the OData feed. When you're done with that, select next, and then the, the dialog box will come back and it should have just that task table available there for us to select. And there it is, the select tables uh, from the data connection wizard. Click on tasks, select next. Uh, this just gives you an opportunity to uh, specify a different file name for it and to provide us the description if you really want to. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna click finished. Uh, this is just asking, hey, you have uh, a data feed with that name, do you wanna overwrite it? Yeah, I do. I'm gonna select to create a table, click okay. Takes just a moment. What you're seeing is if you notice in the bottom right, the data is actually being retrieved at this moment in time. That is why we're, we're waiting for this initial retrieve. Uh, this is the one thing about PowerView, which is what we're using right now, that you'll you'll come to find out. PowerView over a WAN. Uh, performance can be something that, that uh, can be problematic, and we're gonna show you something right off the bat to help alleviate that. There's all my data, and if I scroll all the way to the right, you'll notice that there's my major milestone field. And the other thing that you'll notice is, oh, it's not populated for all these records. Therefore, we are retrieving quite a few records that we don't even want in this report. Therefore, we're gonna remedy that immediately. Navigate to the data ribbon, click on connections. With our data feed selected, we'll select properties. We'll select definition. And I'm gonna go ahead and widen this out a little. We're gonna put a filter here. I'm going to uh, go ahead and put a filter on major milestone where it's not equal to NE and then just null like so. Therefore, that's all I added is that part right there to the end of my connection string. I'm basically saying that I want to add a filter to this connection string. The filter equals the custom field called major milestone where it is not equal to the value of null and I'm going to click OK. It's just basically saying, hey Dan, you know what, you've made a change to this data source. Are you okay with making that change because it is going to change things within this project file? And I'm going to say yes. Uh, not a project file, but rather a, a data source within this Excel report. When it's finished, which it did, there's that huge improvement that I was looking for, is that now we no longer have all those extra records that we didn't want. Now we have only those records we care about, records with a major milestone value populated. All right, a couple other things. Uh, let's go to the data model. And the data models are where we can actually manipulate 
we can actually do many things within the data model, but what we're gonna do here are two specific things. We're gonna remove the fields we don't want first, and I find it easiest to do that from the datagram uh, diagram view. In the diagram view, here's that one lone O data feed. I'm gonna to refer to it as a table. What I'm gonna do is remove all the fields we don't need, all right? So I'm going to highlight the ones I'm getting rid of, right click, select delete, confirm. Do this again. Now I'm gonna go all the way to task, finish variants, same thing, delete. And then I'm going to select from early, because I want the finished date. I'm gonna go from early start all the way to project name. Now, of course, I could have saved other fields if I wanted to add other things to this report. I did save the task ID and the project type, uh, ID should I want to, at a later point in time, create another version of this report, add another OData feed, um, and then, of course, add all sorts of other data to this. That's what I wanted to do to this table. Another thing I want to do is this is that this finish variance, this is actually in hours. Uh, you know, it might be easier to actually have one that uh, you can see in days. So what I'm gonna do is add a column here. And let's do this again. All right. So we're gonna say task finish variance. divided by eight. Let's do that the other way. Divided by eight, press enter. Okay, so now you can see that the calculated column value is 14. All right, so it's 112 divided by eight equals 14. What I'm gonna do is change the name. Task, finish, variance, day. And there's my new column. Therefore, we took care of the two things that we really wanted to here. We removed the fields that we don't need. Why did we do that? Because the more data you have traveling over the WAN, the wide area network, the longer it is going to take for that data to be retrieved. And that's something that's really important with these reports is that when you refresh them, you're gonna want them to refresh as quickly as possible. Uh, the other thing we did is we added a, a calculated field, which is basically the task finish variance divided by eight. Okay, we're done with that. All right, let's move over. So there is our Report, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all the data in here and uh, let's go back to design and then I'm gonna actually add a, a pivot table to this report. We'll say summarize with pivot table, already selected the range, click okay, and there is our pivot table. I'm gonna just delete those two lines at the top. All right, first thing I wanna have here is the project name. We'll go ahead and click right on that and you can see there's our projects, great. There is a blank line here. Let me get rid of that because blank lines aren't needed in my report. The other thing that's not needed here is the grand total. Let's go ahead and get rid of the grand total. Uh, from the design ribbon, you'll see there's a grand totals uh, ribbon button in the layout section. And what we wanna do is offer rows and columns. That'll get rid of the grand totals because we certainly don't need that. Then what we wanna do is we want to bring that major milestone out as a column so it goes across the top. And there are the major milestones across the top. Now, there are multiple things we could certainly do here at this point, right? We could certainly bring out the task finish date. Now, it's gonna show as ones by default. You know, we can certainly take care of that, right? Come in here, change the number format to a date, click okay. Okay, and there's the task finish dates. Now, probably be better if we had another column here with the baseline finish date that showed us, you know, when it looks like we're actually finishing compared to when we're supposed to be finishing, right? Um, and then we can see the, the variance between the two. Okay, so that's one example. One thing you could do, um, and I could actually do some conditional formatting based on the variance between the two. Another thing I could do is I could use, like we, we had done, is bring out this task finish variance. We're gonna get rid of that other field here. Now, instead of account, let's change this to a sum. There's that task finished variance field. Remember what this is? We talked about it originally when we added the field, right? This is hours. We're not gonna want hours here, but we're gonna display it first. 104 hours, 160 hours, 128, 88 hours. Okay, well, that's an interesting field. And then we created the task finish variance day field. 
I'm going to remove that. I'm going to do the same thing to this field. We'll go into the settings. We'll sum it. We'll do it as a number. We'll get rid of the decimal positions. And now we can see the days. No variance is a really good thing, obviously. You know, eight day variance, 14 day variance, 20 day variance, 12, 13. Ideally, what I would want to see here, if I were to put some conditional formatting, is a variance, uh, conditional, for conditional formatting uh, that was equivalent to the variance based on the overall duration of the project. Now I'm going to take the easy road here, right? We're just going to go here. We're going to say conditional formatting, and I'm going to I'm going to pick a a scale that's in the in the ballpark, I guess we could say, right? So we have the greens and we have the yellows and the reds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to customize this a little bit. Conditional formatting, manage rules, edit the rule. And what I'm going to do is change this to use numbers. Uh, the reason, the, what the percentiles do is it's a graduated scale. You know, if, I have, if I have projects that continuously have more egregious deltas or, or variances, it's going to continue to move the scale. And I just don't want it to do that in this particular case. So I'm going to still say that a, a no variance is going to be green. I'm going to say maybe a yellow is around 7 and a red variance is around 15. Click OK. And there's my quick version of it. So again, the, the zeros, ones, you're going to see the sixes start to get yellow. I have some twos. You can see the shades change. The seven should be a straight yellow, right? And then we get to nines, we get to 11s, and then, you know, we, what did we say? We said 15. We don't have exactly a 15, but you can see the 13, the 14, they get very red. The 17, obviously, is as red as it's going to get. So there's your very quick major milestone report. What I can do now is do some things that really tidy the report up. I think you're going to want to add your custom uh, company logo to the report, typically, we see people do. So I can come in here, I can bring my custom logo, and obviously I can resize it like so, put it up in the top right. Now the other thing I'm going to want to do is get rid of grid lines here. And typically what we'll see is we'll come in here to the home, merge and center, major milestone report, click off, click on do that, right? There's my super simple report. It didn't take us long at all. I think it was about 10 or 15 minutes or so. Let's save this to our report area. File, save, save as. I'm going to browse. It brings up my save as dialog box. What I have to do is, is locate my report area. Therefore, to do that, I'm going to go to my project online environment. I'm going to click on reports here. And it takes just a moment. We'll go ahead and click on English. We'll grab the URL through reports. And again, PWA slash and then PWA slash reports is my library. Paste it in there. Click the rightward pointing arrow. There you can see we have the libraries. What I want to do is locate English. Double click. Major milestones report. Click save. Takes a moment. There's always a little latency over the wider network saving these reports. And there's the report saved. I'm going to close out of Excel. And we'll go ahead and refresh this. OK, major milestones report. There it is a few seconds ago. Let's go ahead and click on that. There's my report, folks. If it works out, OK. And I'm going to refresh all just to make sure that the refreshing works. Of course, we're going to get that warning. Just confirming that there's no error upon refresh working on it. So far, so good. Take just a couple more moments, and this refresh should be done. And uh, this report should be go to go, uh, good to go. We can say, hey, users, ready to go. You can start using the report effective immediately as you update your projects, come back in this report, refresh the data, and uh, then you should be ref see reflected um, the refresh data in the report. And there's the refresh report working successfully. We're good to go. Any questions, feel to reach uh, out to me directly. Looking forward to any questions you may have. Thanks very much for watching.